Jonathan Haslam, good morning. Former good morning. head of comms. So the, I've got to do this. You, you're there now, last night. This happens. What the hell do you do, man? Fire him instantly. And uh, why the Conservative Party is recruiting these people, and they've had prior, prior warning, heaven knows. I mean, where do you find these guys? Uh, and what is it about Northwest politicians, and, and particularly? Well, no, I said Scott, Scott Benson, Benson in Blackpool South, and Indeed. then Menzies in in Fylde. It's all and within the same area. It, 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 There's a geographical thing. Hold there. on it's a like... second. Taking what you just said, though, is is very interesting. And I know you, we're flippant about sacking him, but, but we've been talking about. I believe that we have a right as a democratic electorate to expect high standards, whether that's him, Scott Benton, Angela Rayner, tell the truth. It's not about money. It's about we want to trust these people. Their reputation as an entity is in the toilet, Jonathan. You wouldn't disagree with that. You said, where do they come from? Are we putting too much pressure on people who have been on here this morning going, well, they work long days and there's bars and stuff. There are people in the United Kingdom who work long days and go to the pub that don't end up with cocaine and a rent boy at 3 o'clock in the morning. Allegedly. Uh, but, you know, you and I are both reasonable people. Or so boring, let, maybe. Let us just say, this guy's obviously got some mental health problems, he's got sexuality problems, but you have to ask questions of the Conservative Party about how they are recruiting the people who are holding our futures in their Completely hands through agree. legislation that's going forward. And there are too many examples that we've seen on both sides of the political divide of people who just simply cannot hack it and shouldn't be in that position. Um, and it is bizarre that the poor people of Fylde have had this person foisted on them for another election in the face of information they already had. But my point is, and, I, and I'm going to tread really carefully because I don't want you to shout at me, um, we've had people on this morning, not you, Jonathan, um, We've had people on here this morning who say we expect too much from our MPs. And, you know, if you go online and you... I mean, your boss had an affair, right? Let's be perfectly frank. That's a well-known fact with Edwina Curry. What I'm trying to say is do we expect too much? Do we expect them to be all be squeaky clean people? What about politicians being more honest with the public and say, I'm divorced twice, I'm living with a... Would we, that work? Jeremy, we expect our politicians to be like us. Sensible, reasonable people yeah. trying to do a good job and it's a very difficult job. Yep. And 99.9% .9 of the people in the Houses of Parliament actually do a really good job for their constituents. OK. You get some rotten apples you do but, throughout society. But you society. would understand, but, Jonathan, you know, there are expected. many rotten apples. It seems to be every single day there's a new, there's <clears> a new sleaze <throat> thing, doesn't it? It does indeed. The numbers are small, relatively speaking. But we do ask questions about the strength of character of people who mm. are putting themselves up for election. And we have to recognise as well, because, as I said, we're reasonable people. Social media has changed the dynamic for people in public life, I mean, it's not just out. politicians, yeah, just but for caught. Nicola, but for you, Listen, Jeremy, you are in the public eye. Yeah. Yeah. And it changes the dynamic in a dramatic way. But then, and but we then, as then my point is that then my point is Nicola careful. Thorpe and Jeremy Carl are mature enough to not go and do... That's ridiculous. And there is a difference. I take your point about, you know, people get involved in affairs, etc. But that, to me, is a personal matter mm -hmm. for, you know, to a certain extent. However, with this case, what is being alleged Campaign is not course. just mm -hmm. misdemeanours in terms of lifestyle choice, but campaign money. Campaign and criminality as well, yeah. because yeah. The associations alleged about drug misuse uh, and uh, you know perhaps importuning young people who are not of the legal age to be able to uh, engage in any activities. Lots of, of that sort. response, Jonathan. Is that Maeve? How would you say that name? Maeve. Or Maeve. Maeve. Yeah. The saddest part of, the, of this, actually, she says, is this isn't the first, and he won't be the last MP to abuse his power and his position. That's what's causing people to be so fed up. I think it's a very relevant point. It is indeed, and that's why you would expect the party to act more determinedly and more quickly to to make sure that they've actually got the right people and the right jobs. And if people have fallen short, you need to find ways of helping them, if that's appropriate, or cutting the cord. And that's not what the Conservative Party appears to be doing. Why then wouldn't they have dropped him from the party when 10 years ago there was that scandal involving, Absolutely. allegedly, rent boys and, and drug use? I just, I find it, it incredible that they wouldn't absolutely. have a, a talent pool big enough to, to get somebody else I in. I agree with that entirely. There are talented people out there. One of the problems that we've also got here is that uh, disconnect between us as people who think, you know, Actually, are we paying MPs enough for the job they're doing? I know, you know, some people will say no, that they get a lot of money. This morning. But you, you, you do have people. But that, more money doesn't mean morality. They, does they it? are, they are legislating for us, and yeah. you want people who are 
of a right calibre to do it, who are prepared to take the slings and the brickbats of being in public life, of being in that goldfish bowl, mm. to do an effective job. I, th I don't I, think we're there. I, I see it a bit like a football manager. You think of the iconic football managers who had complete control of the team. Think of Sir Alex Ferguson, and then you see players on high wages nowadays with, with managers they openly, openly are, are against. Listen to what Rosie says. The reason the Tories are being in this mess is because they don't have a leader to look, look up to who is strong. Sunak's sinking popularity explains the party's dying enthusiasm to serve and their audacity is openly abusing their position as MPs. Only a general election could save this country. I not, honestly believe... Not, not quite correct. He's not very strong, though, no, is he, Sunak? No, Sunak's been around for, you know, what, 18 months? Yeah. This predates, predates that. This guy was elected in an election before Sunak became Why, prime minister. Ago, you, can, you, throw him can, out? you cannot, you know, lay all of this at Sunak's door. Let's admit it. Sunak has inherited the most awful mess within mm. the Conservative Party. Wanted the job, though, Jay. What he, yes, of course, they always want the job. Mm. And actually, in the first instances, he gave us a degree of stability. So let's give him a bit of credit for doing that. Feels I like there have to be so many more checks and balances. Mm. I mean, it's not just it's not just the Tory party or the Labour party. Look at Reform as well, who are trying to, um, you know, push their new candidates across the country. And then one was found to have already died. died. And then another... Sorry? Yeah, one of oh, the Reform yes. candidates had actually already passed away. They weren't aware of it. Um, and somebody else had been Probably involved... Probably get elected. In, well, yeah. Uh, had been involved in other horrendous crimes and should never have been on the ballot. But... And it is across all parties. We make, Nick makes yeah. that point. Re Reform Re is, you know, it's just a new party of a few people. They have no infrastructure whatsoever to be able to weed out the loonies until a free press does it for them. And this is actually a big advert for a free press. Again, could you not argue that that's exactly what's happened to the Tory party as well, that thanks to this investigation from The Times, this mm. is what's brought this story to light? Indeed, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's but, I mean, well, I will essential, take issue with you, because the first thing out of your mouth was saying, yeah. sack him. I, I'm, I don't oh, rate Sunak. That's I don't pragmatic. Think it, you, you, you can talk about the past. Why three months ago didn't Rishi Sunak go, get him out of my party right now and let's, show a pair? Let's find out what he was told in the first instance, or did the apparatchiks in central office just say, we'll just try and hide this away? Poor Rishi's got an awful lot of other problems there. We don't know How at this do you, point. Right, that's a really interesting thing for me. So... We can sit here and think the PM would be the be-all and the end-all and would know all, but stuff's kept from him, right? Well, you can't deal with everything. You know, Processes. he's got so many things. He's got people he needs to rely on. I'd want on. to know if one of my thing. MPs had been caught in allegedly wherever. Chief Whip's job. I'm trying to run a country. I'm trying to get a Rwanda bill through. I'm trying to get the economy in a state where actually we can go to the electorate and say, you know, don't trust the other lot. See what they will do with your finances. At mm -hmm. least we've turned it round. You know, he cannot do everything. And part of a problem with a Prime Minister who tries to do everything, it's the Gordon Brown syndrome. And actually, you don't do the right things. You don't prioritise. You need good people in the right place covering your back. And that's not what Sunak's got. Do you think really Sunak's got the respect of his party? The respect He's of got the MPs? respect of some of it. Mm. But clearly, there is a right wing. There is a, you know, there is an existential debate going on within the Conservative Party about whether they're going down loony truss and, you know, the ultra right wing of it, or are they sticking with your Damien Greens and your justice ministers and other people in the centre of the party where most of the country is? And then you've got that fascinating divide of where do you put Kemi Badenoch? Right. Because a very smart lady inclined towards the right but very pragmatic on other issues, just not doing a terribly good job with trade deals. It's very interesting, um, isn't it? You, you talk there like, the, you know, the country is a business. and it, you, you, I was sitting there thinking, God, you'd have to be so careful who you pick to be your chief of staff or your director of communications. Or to chairman have... of the post office. Yes. But, wow, Haslam's on form this morning. <laughs> we'll have a knighthood for you yet, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so very much. much indeed. Jonathan Haslam there, former head of comms for number 10. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.